Charles Brownstein's the executive director of the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund, and we've been talking over the last week the story of a man arrested going into Canada with manga on his laptop, uh, depicting what Canadian authorities are calling child pornography. Uh, latest reports suggest the man could face at least one year in prison, and the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund is mounting a campaign to defend this man whose identity, as far as I know, Charles, is still be uh, maintained private. Tell me how you got involved in this case. How'd you hear about it? The individual in question reached out to us asking for help. It's as simple as that. And we're a defense fund that specializes in protecting the First Amendment rights of the comics art form. For 25 years, we've been protecting retailers. We've been protecting publishers. We've been protecting artists. And this is one of a disturbing new trend where we're seeing government authorities go after readers. And our board of directors, when we heard from, from the individual, decided that this, this is something we've got to fight for. Let's get to this, the specifics of this case in a second. What are the most common types of cases you've gotten involved in since you've been executive director? I've been at the fund for about nine years now, and one of the things that um, we've seen in that time is a shift from the traditional order of cases where retailers are being targeted by police officers or local, uh, local prosecution authorities who are sending up stings to prosecute people for selling adult comic books to adults. So we'll see people being gone after for material that contains sexuality. We've seen a generation of cases that we fought in courts and won where the laws have been trying, the, the governments have been trying to broaden the definition of obscenity to, to include violence, and we fought and beat all, all of those. This is the start of a new shift where we're seeing law enforcement and government authorities go after individuals for the possession of art that they own, and it's very disturbing. So is your position, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is, is your position that whatever is depicted in, in comic books, uh, given that it is fiction, should not have any legal repercussions whatsoever, period. Is, that, is it that simple? Individuals should not be prosecuted for owning, making, or reading artwork, no. And with this particular case, what are what is at the root of this issue? My reading of it is that uh, there are some laws, Japan has a law, and there are other similar laws that say that any depiction of child pornography specifically, even if it is completely fictional, is still does still qualify as child pornography, even though there is no specific victim. What's the specific law in Canada? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? In Canada, what, is, what specifically governs this type of material? What we're seeing in this case is a very irregular occurrence in that we're seeing customs authorities making a threshold determination that it doesn't appear that they've been properly trained on and indicating that work somebody carried on their laptop computer that they searched for reasons that are known only to them is what they're alleging to be child pornography and in customs cases traditionally what we see is that if they are searching materials and they're searching comics far more frequently now they will either search and admit the person or the material into the country. They will either search and deny the person entry or the material entry into the country. This is a new ripple in that we're seeing that they are prosecuting somebody and alleging that art that he carried for his private reading on his computer is importation of child pornography uh, because it's drawings. It's a very irregular and disturbing case and hopefully not the start of a trend. The one argument that I was emailed, when we first mentioned this last week, I received hundreds of emails about this from our audience, and most of them were pretty clear in that they believe that this was, this was not a legitimate case, and they made the argument, for example, robbing banks is illegal, therefore would a comic book depicting the robbing of a bank also be illegal? No, very few people would make that case. The one that sticks out in my mind is, and this is really a U.S. thing, with the Patriot Act, if we could make the argument that a comic book was specifically promoting or inciting terrorism, I think that there would be, not personally, but just based on my reading of the Patriot Act, there could be real legal repercussions there. Do you see that as possibly opening up the door to say, well, listen, 
even though no child was harmed in the making of these magazines, somebody who enjoys this could arguably be incited to take this over into the real world. And again, I'm just completely speculating here based on some of the emails I've gotten. Is that the biggest danger you see or the biggest point you see your opponents making on this? You know, I've heard those media effects arguments be raised against violent material in terms of video games and comic books. I've heard, and, and I've never seen anything persuasive in the media effects arguments to show that people that take in any kind of media actually commit the crimes depicted there. But on the child pornography question, I think it's very important to recognize that the stated government interest in the United States and in Canada of anti-child pornography laws is to protect real people that are being harmed in the process of a heinous crime. Child pornography is photographic evidence of a crime, and to broaden that definition to include work that depicts the sexuality of minors is to, in some ways, diminish the people that are victims of the real crime. And it's a dangerous, slippery slope to prosecute people for the content of what is happening in their minds when they read art and to conflate that with the actual abuse being suffered by real people. And when I see cases like the one that we're working to help defend in Canada, I see government resources being misspent and going after somebody who appreciates an art tradition that has different taboos from the ones we have here in North America. and those resources are not going after the prosecution of real criminals and that's a real outrage. My last thought on this would be as a lot of these drawings become better in terms of quality and detail such that they could be considered so-called pseudo photographs in other words to the untrained eye or at quick glance it may be indistinguishable from a real photograph we still wouldn't have a specific victim that can be identified because again it isn't a picture of a real person but that may not be knowable from taking a quick look at it. Does that present additional legal challenges? I'm sure that these are things that will need to be litigated in court, but I think, again, the real line in the sand here has to be, was a real person harmed? The government interest in these laws is to protect real people from abuse and exploitation, not to prosecute people for having creepy thoughts. And we don't know what goes on in the minds of people that are reading some of the comics that cross these taboo lines from Japan's from Japan. A lot of times what we see in comic art and in art is a full spectrum of expression ranging from the exploration of mainstream topics and themes like Ariel Schrag's comics about coming out and being a sexually confused teenager and finding her path or Phoebe Glockner's comics about sexual abuse and things that have a legitimacy in our culture. We see those things being at much at risk as comics that are coming from Japan that are wonderfully illustrated and talking about the fever dreams and taboos of that culture. Because somebody appreciates this kind of work, does not make them a criminal, does not make them a danger to people in their community. And I think that we really need to be focusing our law enforcement on taking care of the people that are actually in danger and prosecuting the people that are actually harming real people. So will things become more detailed? Will the technology create an issue? Maybe, but I think that we need to always remain at the heart of the matter. These laws are to protect real people, not to protect the, not to prosecute the thoughts that people have. Charles Brownstein, executive director of the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll keep an eye on the case and check in with you. Thanks, David. Talk okay. to you again. Thanks so much.